According to years of scientific study, the sun is hot. And you know what else is hot that's about the same temperature as the surface of the sun? the inner core of the Earth. It's kind of a reorientingly weird fact that something we consider to be so burning, this plasma ball in the heavens, it's, it's like the hottest, right? Well, just a few kilometers, few thousand kilometers beneath your feet is something just as hot. A molten surrounding a solid metal core of ultimate hotness. And if they're about the same temperature right now, you might as well be walking on the sun. Smash Mouth. The Planet Core. Go. Hello and welcome to another edition of Footnotes, the companion show to Because Science, where I take all of your comments, questions, and corrections, and then I heat them up into a plasma e ball of answers. And then I tell you what's coming up next on this here B channel. And it is. It's about a certain speedster whose name rhymes with. The Clash. You'll never get it. But getting right down to it, in the last episode of Because Science, we're going through what would happen if the sun went supernova. Again, the sun is not going to go supernova because it doesn't have enough mass, but if it did, what would happen to life on Earth? I said that it wouldn't be the light that outshines galaxies or the material blowing away from the sun that would destroy us, and they would indeed destroy us. It would be the ghostly neutrino, quadrillions of them boiling you from the inside out until everything in the solar system is vaporized. Fun. But since you're alive, I want to know what you have to say. Our first comment comes from Tom Snout, who says, Very interesting dive, Kyle. Loved it. Your villainous plots is... This sterilization that happens fairly often seems to make stuff like the Fermi equation, the likelihood of life, that much smaller a sum. Why don't we see other civilizations in the universe, the Fermi paradox? Information like this just makes life on this planet seem so much more precious, unique, unlikely, and most importantly, worth fighting to protect. Thanks, Kyle, and as always, love the show. Yeah, with as many stars as there are in the universe, it's very possible that a uh, sun going supernova or a gamma ray burst wiped out a civilization, and that's why we've never heard from aliens anywhere in the universe where we can't find them and we don't see traces of them. That's very possible, and it does make life here worth living. But then again, you can find that within yourself, too. Living is living well. Living is living well. Put it on my tombstone. Our next comment comes from Kwa Lin Yang, who's quoting me. There's not a whole lot you can do if the sun goes supernova and, you know, we're just going to be destroyed. Oh, so you mean, Kyle, we have a few that we can do? Yeah. If once the neutrinos are on their way towards Earth, you have about eight minutes. You, you know what you could do in eight minutes with your last time on Earth? Cook a piece of salmon in the air fryer. Pet your cat. A lot. Make out. But not for eight minutes, it gets, it gets old after like one, two. Reflect on your life and everything you didn't do. Call your mom if you can. But do you know what I would do with my eight minutes? <laughs> okay, I was trying to think of something serious to say, but the first thing I thought of was running out onto my balcony and being like, ah! for eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Mastro Piero says, hey Kyle, love the show. Oh, thanks. I think I'm missing something. After these hyper-energized neutrinos gain all this energy, would they then suffer from the drunkard's walk problem like photons in the sun do? Well, what Joe is referring to, this drunkard's walk, is the random, kind of like they were drunk, the random motion of photons in the shells of the sun, the layers of the sun, after they are created as a part of all this fusion. Because the photons created in the sun they don't just move outwards out. When they're produced in the sun, they don't immediately travel towards Earth, for example. They spend literally tens of thousands of years moving in random directions until they randomly move out of the sun and then travel through empty space. Neutrinos do not have this problem, Joe, because as we explained, they are so weakly interacting, they do not have the same impedance with all this uh, solar material, so they pass right through. And to answer another question that a lot of you had, even when they get more energy, they're still so weakly interacting 
that they're passing through the sun like it isn't even there. Why it would spell doom for us is because there's still enough of them, even though they're weakly interacting, that they deposit enough energy to, to cook basically every cubic centimeter in your body with 50 times the intensity of sunlight. Yeah! You would get a pretty decent base layer, though. It would be fire. You'd be lit. You'd be fresh to death. Our next comment comes from Jacopo Guerzoni, who says, uh, quoting me, neutrinos are passing through you right now and you feel nothing, huh. except constant anxiety. Well, first of all, if you're having actual problems, you should go see a professional, like I've done. It helps. Also, I, I get a supernova could be about to happen a few light years away from us right now, and uh, the neutrinos could be already on their way to sterilize all life on this planet, and we'd never even know about it. So don't worry about it. If it happens, you... It, it, but the nerdiest comment at the time I'm filming this here video, I gotta give to Derek Casagrande, who says, uh, hey Kyle, love the show. <laughs> Always the highlight of my day when I can tune in and learn something. Thank you. Anyway, I have a hypothetical and completely impractical solution. Uh, Derek goes on to say, Maybe we could protect ourselves from the sun going supernova with something like a reverse Dyson sphere, putting enough material between us and the sun such that it would absorb enough of the neutrinos and the material would be uh, ablated away, vaporized away, and then that could take the brunt of the solar force. I think it's a very interesting sci-fi concept. However, even if there was lead from the sun all the way to Earth, because of the weakly interacting nature of neutrinos, there would still be enough that would get to us that it would, it'd be bad. Like, apocalypse bad. But I like your idea. You should use it in the sci-fi story, Casa Grande. And for that, you are indeed a big old nerd. A grande nerd. But of course, I'm not always right. In the episode, I said neutron when I meant to say neutrino. They're not the same. So what did I get wrong? The first correction comes from John 73, John, who says, uh, quoting me, what would happen to humanity if the sun went supernova? John says, nothing. Technically speaking, the best kind of speaking, we would have never existed in this scenario because the sun would have to be at least 10 times more massive, rendering the earth uninhabitable. Oh, by the way, I love the show. I quote you all the time. Thanks. Yes, John, I agree with you that if the sun could go supernova, the universe would be different and then we'd be living in a different universe. It's called a gedanken, a thought experiment, as Einstein used to say. We're changing one variable here and it leads to interesting consequences and maybe we can learn something. <laughs> but John, Johnny boy, uh, Johnny boy, is that even the right, right German word? Gedanken. Woo! Danke, Shane, Google. Nailed it. Our next correction uh, comes from Rob Spies, who's referring to my Nove equation and says, I haven't seen a more perfect equation since a volume of pizza with a radius z and height a. The volume of pizza equals pi times z times z times a. That's a volume of pizza. Isn't that fun? <laughs> also, an equation isn't an equation without an equal sign. All right, fine. So my awesome Nove equation here didn't have an equal sign, but it equals how much, e I said it, it equals how much energy is deposited per second in a human volume from the neutrinos of a supernova. So if you wanted to put an equation there, it could be uh, Nove equals death. Our next correction comes from Abdur, who says, let's try to be different. Hey show, love the Kyle. You think. Who says, at the end of the video, you mentioned that the SNEZ the supernova early warning system, would be able to detect the sun about to be blown out. This would not give us an early warning because it calculates the event by measuring the neutrinos from a star. Since the neutrinos will reach Earth and the detectors are on Earth, there would be no point to an early warning system. <sighs> There are other factors you can look into when a sun or a star is about to explode. This was in the news recently, uh, Betelgeuse, or Betelgeuse if you Okay, we've said it twice, we gotta be careful. When a star started to dim, astronomers were looking at this star, and it was starting to dim and act in a way that might suggest that it could explode. So SNEWS looks at not just measurements like neutrinos, but it is monitoring some other aspects of stars that would give us an indication, and then we would be able to get some kind of advanced warning. And that's why we're looking around the sky for these stars, because if we get an indication that they might go supernova, we turn all of our telescopes at it, and then we observe and get more data, like Brett Spiner. Our next correction comes from a number of you, Stephen A, Ellen Nash, uh, Mogron, 
destroyer of worlds. I said in the episode, more or less the speed of light. You can't have something more than the speed of light. You can have less though. Come on, Kyle, what are you doing? I didn't say more or less than the speed of light, did I? I did not say more than or less than. I said more or less the speed of light, meaning like it's close. It's more or less equivalent to the speed of light. I didn't say it could be more than. I know that nothing can travel faster than speed of light. Not Sonic, not The Flash, not any of your weird superheroes. Uh-uh. It's impossible, Bill. It's impossible. It'd be easier to get Half-Life 3 when, than it would be to get something to go faster than the speed of light. Both of those things are never gonna happen. But the nerdiest correction at the time I'm filming this episode is something you all missed, but Erica Dunning caught. My friend who I met at a convention, she's now a junior physics major, she sent me uh, this screenshot that you're seeing here and said, oh, his units don't appear to cancel out, so how do you get this 50 watts value? I'll need to solve this later. Well, looking at this equation again, uh, Erica, you're absolutely right. If you look at the seven times 10 uh, centimeters squared divided by seconds, it should actually be about 70 billion neutrinos passing through each square centimeter on Earth per second. So it should be seven times 10 to the 10 over centimeter squared seconds. So I actually did put the division in the wrong place when I wrote it out, but the value is correct. I checked it and double checked it. But for pointing that out when no one else did and trying to keep me honest, Erica, you were indeed a super nerd. Ah! Now, moving right along to this week's episode. This week's episode is The Flash is the Wrong Color. That's right, in this week's episode of Because Science, I'm using physics to say that if the Flash can travel as fast as all the comics and movies say he can, then he should only be read when he's standing still. Ooh. But before we get to the Flash and speedy speed stuff, please go watch the latest episode of Because Science if you haven't yet, and leave me all your best and nerdiest corrections here.